I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video to announce my new Mimetics book. The book is now available on Amazon.com, and please see the links at the bottom for more details about that. So, here's the book, the front cover of the book, and the back cover looks like that, and there's the spine of the book, and I'm pretty pleased with the overall build quality. Um, the cover's glossy, and it's all worked out pretty well, I'm quite pleased. So, the book is all about memes and the science of cultural evolution, as you can probably see from the subtitle of the book there. And memes are small sections of inherited cultural information. So just as genes transmit inherited organic information down the generations, so memes transmit inherited cultural information. And memetics is the name of the field devoted to the study of memes, and thus the title of my book. So memes represent the rise of a new medium of inheritance on the planet. And for the first time in three billion years, DNA has had a credible rival. As a result, meme products are making substantial inroads into the biosphere. The rise of the memes shows little signs of slowing down and reaching an equilibrium with the nucleic acids that preceded them, so an understanding of this area seems to be rather important. A brief reading from the introduction should help to give a flavour of the book. So, this book is about a curious and counterintuitive idea. The idea is that humans are apes with infected brains, that we harbour living things inside our skulls, which are even less closely related to us than the bacteria that thrive in our guts are. These entities are not bacteria or other microorganisms, they are a new form of life, not closely related to the DNA-based life forms that have dominated the planet for billions of years. It is the presence of these entities that distinguishes modern humans from primitive cave dwellers. They are what is responsible for our music, literature, science and technology. It seems likely that these entities have been with us for millions of years and are a major factor in contributing to making us human in the first place. This means that most accounts of human evolution that fail to take account of these entities are deeply misguided. Describing humans as apes with infected brains is not meant to imply that the infectious agents are necessarily deleterious, just that they don't always necessarily have our best interests at heart. Many of the visitors are mutualists, useful symbionts. However, others are toxic and harmful, and humans are often in need of strategies for getting their brains disinfected. So that's the basic idea of memetics in a nutshell. And then on the next page, um, I go on to describe uh, memetics using um, a diagram. And so here's a brain full of ideas on this side. And then on the other side, we have a zit, which is intended to represent the b bacteria that cause acne. So there's a block generated by the bacteria at the top that generates a pool of juices inside the blocked pore and then we see in the next diagram the juices spurt out of the um, zit at the top and then some of them find their way to other sweat, uninfected sweat pores um, maybe in the same person or maybe in another person um, thereby perpetuating the reproductive cycle of the bacteria and then over here we see the human brain the ideas spurt out of the human mouth in a similar way to the juices spurt out of the, um, of the zit and then the ideas find their way into other brains um, and go on to perpetuate their reproductive cycle so this is the basic idea of memetics in a short diagram So far, humanity has had a hard time digesting Darwinism, with popular understanding of the topic spreading slowly. According to my book, the revolution started by Darwin is only about halfway through. Many scientists are still getting to grips with the idea that our bodies are the product of Darwinian forces, and have yet to get their heads around the idea that all human culture, science, technology, religion and so on, are also the result of Darwinian evolution. Yet without an understanding of cultural evolution, the study of human society and culture is hopelessly stuck in a pre-Darwinian era. Evolutionary theory is key to understanding cultural evolution, just as it is central to understanding organic evolution. So let's hope that now that we've got access to the internet, it won't take another 150 years for the study of human culture to catch up with the rest of evolutionary biology. Memetics was really founded by Richard Dawkins in his classic 1976 book, The Selfish Gene. And Dawkins pretty much nailed the topic, and authors and scientists in the area since then have mostly been playing catch-up. However, Dawkins only managed a single chapter on the topic. So, in my book, with my 30 chapters, I'm hoping to do a little bit better than that. There have been a number of books on the topic since then. Um, the first was Aaron Lynch's Thought Contagion. And then we've got Richard Brody's Virus of the Mind. And then probably the most important book since then is Susan Blackmore's The Meme Machine. 
How about that? book is over a decade old now, and there's been quite an explosion of activity in, in, in the area since then, with scientific publications on the topic in the last decade um, reaching vast numbers, and so I figure the topic plainly needs revisiting. Um, cultural evolution is one of the most confused and misunderstood areas of science that I've encountered to date. The specialists within cultural anthropology and history who are supposed to be studying the area have mostly adopted a bizarre and unscientific approach in which observations are key and theoretical expectations represent an undesirable source of bias. However, this just isn't how science works and as a result whole areas of social sciences are grossly distorted. There's also considerable balkanisation. Experts in the social sciences can't talk to each other very easily because of the lack of a unified framework that would be provided by adopting Darwinian foundations. Social scientists have previously seen the influence of Darwinism. Darwin has brought them eugenics, social Darwinism and sociobiology which misguidedly attempts to reduce social phenomena to genes and as a result to this day Darwin is mostly kept at arm's length in the very field where the topic most urgently needs to be studied. The resulting anti-Darwinian mindset has had devastating effects on genuine scientific study in these areas. However, there's an ongoing influx of interest in the area. There's been a substantial explosion of memes on the internet recently, with meme-related searches in 2011 rising to five to ten times previous levels. Internet memes have started appearing regularly in mainstream news channels, and there are substantial online subcultures devoted to memes. The internet is really a key tool for spreading and studying memes. The ability to decompose online memes into sequences of zeros and ones is broadly comparable to the ability to sequence genomes, and this facilitates attempts to study cultural lineages from a phylomimetic perspective, and so document the evolution of culture. So, I reckon it's a good time for my book on the topic to be published. In my book, there's sections on the history of memetics, the origin of human culture, human meme spreading adaptations, how to classify memes, the major transitions in memetic evolution, applications of memetics to marketing, advertising, politics, science, um, military applications, and self-development. The science surrounding memetic change is covered, including sections on meme gene coevolution, symbiosis-based models of their interactions, and epidemiological models of meme spread. The chapter related to criticisms of the topic. Another chapter on generalising Darwinism in an attempt to produce a more universally applicable form of it. There's a chapter on selection processes within the human mind. Another chapter deals with the rapidly developing topic of mimetic algorithms, which are related to genetic algorithms and represent an attempt to duplicate human cultural evolution inside machines. The book closes with a look into the future and the possibility of a mimetic takeover. A brief reading from the book on the significance of the whole topic. Richard Brody, in 1996, characterised the shift towards cultural evolution as a paradigm shift, saying, Viruses of the mind and the whole science of memetics represent a major paradigm shift in the science of the mind. It is a paradigm shift, probably the biggest, biggest disruption in evolutionary theory since 1859. However, it isn't just a paradigm shift. Not only is our understanding of evolutionary theory changing, but the way in which evolution actually happens is changing too. The introduction of directed mutations, intelligent design, and the whole modern optimization toolkit are not just major developments in the theory of evolution, they're major changes in how the process of evolution actually works. So, my book is necessarily somewhat technical. I've tried hard to make it accessible to the general population, but some basic knowledge of evolutionary theory would certainly help in understanding its message. If you're interested in the whole area, my book makes essential reading. It's now available. Please follow the links below to get hold of a copy. And oh yes, if you can help introduce other people to this important but neglected area of science, please go right ahead with my blessing. Um, enjoy.